Hey guys, what's up? Rocky Dires here, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome back to this video in series. And in this video, I'll be talking about lazy evaluation. All right, let me run this so that you know you're yeah, okay. So, lazy evaluation is a pretty impo important concept, and it is an evaluation strategy. It is very simple to understand, but difficult to implement. So, we won't be implementing a lot of uh, any kind of examples over here in this. Uh, uh, video as you can see I ended with the 18 points over here so let's get started and I'll quickly uh, summarize what it is and I'll uh, take you through all the points one by one and I'll also talk about I'll, I'll also talk about each point in brief so do not worry if you're uh, thinking that oh god this video doesn't have any examples what to do now anyways uh, so let's get started so a lazy evaluation is basically uh, there in uh, functional programming, it is highly used in this uh, uh, programming paradigm. So it's pretty important that you go through this once, at least once. Anyways, uh, let's get started. Uh, an evaluation strategy that delays the evaluation of an expression in programming until its value is needed. So yeah, that's about it. That's pretty simple, right? So lazy evaluation is nothing but evaluating uh, uh, the expression's value or is what you call uh, evaluating the function until it is required so it is being lazy so the opposite is uh, called as uh, eager evaluation it is another evaluation strategy employed by programming languages okay so anyways uh, this is also known as uh, non-strict evaluation and it's also known as call by need evaluation so call by need uh, specific, uh, especially gives you the idea that whenever the necessity arises, only then, only then the call is given. So, anyways, as I was saying, this is an evaluation strategy. So, an evaluation strategy use, is used by a programming language to determine when to evaluate the arguments passed into a function call. So, there are about five to six types of uh, lay, uh, evaluation strategies. You can go uh, through them online. So, I won't be talking about others because we are only going to be concerned about lazy evaluation strategy over here. And it also results in sharing of space which allows programs to be uh, run at very high speed. So, alright, so as I was saying, uh, it also results in sharing of space which allows programs to be run at high speed. So, this is uh, especially seen uh, in the evaluation strategy uh, which is our uh, lazy evaluation. So, what happens is that uh, whatever uh, space you have, uh, the same space is uh, shared by uh, the variables and this uh, allows us to use minimal space and also an important advantage of using uh, evaluation uh, lazy evaluation is the ability to define potentially infinite data structures and this is very very important so understand this point and uh, ingrain it into your mind because this is pretty important uh, infinite data structures are those like uh, for example you have Fibonacci series so you can define a Fibonacci series and get any value like the 3000th uh, number in the Fibonacci sequence and you can get the 50,000th uh, number in this Fibonacci sequence as well using these uh, lazy evaluation because essentially you're not running the uh, function so because you're not running the function what happens is that no uh, data is uh, stored anywhere so your storage is safe so no, no kind of uh, like there's no storage requirement over here so infinite loops are avoided and uh, in this way you can uh, basically work with what you call infinite data structures so you can define them as well as use them anyways let's get uh, get ahead so you have uh, you only evaluate an expression once you need it so it is a very common property of purely functional programming languages that intend to win back performance so the winning back performance is a uh, basic, uh, it, it, is, it is a commonly used slogan in the paradigm of functional programming whenever people uh, want to show that functional programming is very very good. So it wins back, uh, it uh, wins, back, uh, wins back performance, I'm sorry, wins back performance uh, when you uh, need uh, the performance, you have performance constraints and your product is based on your speed. So what happens is that the evaluation of the expression is done only when you need it. So this directly goes by the definition of the lazy evaluation as I was speaking uh, initially. 
So it is a very common property of functional programming, which is uh, like Haskell and you have said in other languages that are purely functional. But JavaScript is not uh, just a purely functional language, it's also, it also it's a mixture of both uh, functional as well as OOP languages. Anyways, in a tree data structure, the tree is never evaluated unless the result is used somewhere, saving us a lot of time. So as I, as I was saying in the last video, a tree is a data structure where one node has two or more uh, childs and each child has its own child again, children again, oh my god. Alright, so each uh, child has its own children. So in this way you build a data structure, one links to another and another one links to another. So similarly this tree can be evaluated in a uh, variety of ways. But uh, evaluation uh, on the whole is not uh, done in lazy evaluation because you do not require the result. So unless the result is required, uh, the evaluation isn't done. So a, a lot of time is saved because the tree is only traversed. Traversal means uh, going from one node to another, but not uh, evaluated. Anyways, uh, going further ahead, we have an infinite uh, syntax tree can be used in a recursive form. So as I was saying, uh, recursion is a pretty important concept. We have been through that uh, in the last few videos. Uh, divide and conquer algorithm also runs in recursion. So similarly, we have lazy evaluation also going uh, under uh, recursive form. So an infinite syntax tree can be used in a recursive form is what this point states. And uh, 11th point states, uh, states that instead of using primitives in the control flow, abstractions are used that do not evaluate and store data somewhere. So primitive data types are those data types which take up some uh, space and store some value. Abstractions are those like uh, abstractions are basic blueprints that can be implemented by several objects or any other data type. And abstractions are basically just uh, lines of code and they, are, they do not evaluate to anything. So these are what, you, uh, what are used in lazy evaluation strategy. Anyways, the overall performance increases by avoiding needless calculations. This is pretty obvious. Uh, by now, you must uh, you must have already known this. Uh, so the thirteenth one says that the opposite is known as eager evaluation, greedy evaluation, or strict evaluation. So this is just the opposite one, and it is used in scripting languages like Python and other uh, scripting languages used for machine learning, where the evaluation is done line by line immediately as soon as it's passed. Anyways, uh, 14 point states that however it is in preferred in functions where order is important. Alright guys, so this is very important, so pay attention to this. Uh, order, uh, of, uh, order of execution is very important in certain uh, areas. So, where you need that, uh, lazy evaluation cannot be used because lazy evaluation runs on, you know, orderless patterns. So, the order is not, uh, uh, pretty, the order isn't important. So anyways, uh, delayed evaluation is highly common in functional programming languages. So calculable infinite lists without infinite loops or size matters interfering in computation. So we can create calculable infinite lists as I was saying in the previous points. So this is just a, re a reiteration in another form so that it ingrains in your mind. Anyways, last one says that the reason lazy evaluation is useful even though it causes the programmer to lose control over the order in which their code is executed is because of modularity. So as I was saying, uh, you lose uh, the control uh, over your order of the code. So how to tackle with that is that uh, modularity. Modularity is nothing but breaking down your piece of code into smaller pieces of code. So what you can do is that you can apply lazy evaluation wherever it is required. And in that way, you save. Uh, you you do not have to worry about the order of the code being lost. Lastly, this uh, lazy evaluation uh, strategy opens door to many other possibilities like asynchronous execution, parallelization, and composition, etc. All of these, which we will be talking about in further examples and videos in the coming uh, tutorials. Anyways guys that's it for this video I would like to uh, ask you to give a thumbs up if you liked it and also share it with your friends so that we can get uh, further ahead and so that I can uh, uh, grow my channel pretty well and come up with more content with your comments. 
so make uh, make sure that you give out comments in this uh, comment section below i would like to hear uh, whatever you have to say all right guys thanks a lot for watching this is rocket series i'll see you in the next video bye bye